Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I am Judy Nathans. And I'm Robert Winters. And we are talking, we were talking about development. Right. This is new. Actually, yeah. just one little quick thing yes. here is, is that this is uh, the, the primary election will be the first tryout of the, not tryout, but oh. first implementation of the new voting machines. Oh, right. And not, it's not that big a deal. They're called image cast machines. Can we show that photo? Wait a minute. Don't um, do it. You only get to it. Uh, but here? the thing is, about it is that you as a voter probably are not going to notice anything different. I asked at the Election Commission last week, and the ballot, which is what you mainly interact with, is going to be exactly So you still as it go under the curtain and fill it out? You still fill in the so bubbles what, the right, same show, as always. Show what this is and where is right. this going to live. Okay, so the thing is, is that, you know, the way it was before, I had the AccuVote um, 2000 scanners. Oh, that you, you gave to the you, to the you, poll worker, right? right? Well, actually, no, they always oh. had you feed it in. Right, you feed it in. And we did it, we recorded it, whatever, and it had a tiny, tiny little message if there was an overvoted okay. ballot or whatever. So this is replacing so that. This is replacing oh, that. Oh, okay. So, um, so what you'll see basically is the... It, the it's like a big the, printer. The scanner yeah. simply rests on top of the ballot box. So you see there the ba the scanner... Oh, I see. With this the, is the, the whole and box the ballots on the left. And then you see just, the, down just the scanner at the top. Of, I there. see. Okay. And, and uh, so the, what's a nice advantage is it has a nice little window for... You can give a much more clear message. Where's the window oh, no. here? Um, it's right where you see that. Hey, you were right, right there. It's a little TV screen, basically. Right below there. Right below there. That's a TV screen. Oh. Yeah. So that so the thing is, is that that's mm. that's just gonna um, mean yeah. that for the poll workers uh, and voters alike, right? If there's an issue, you know, an overloaded ballot or a blank ballot or something where It'll which be more apparently immediate. appears to have a, um, um, a stray mark or whatever, if it can read it and, and detect it, It'll you'll be get right a message. So, you'll, so you can actually look at the screen yourself. Yep. You'll be as you as you insert the ballot, it'll give you the information. Excellent. And the poll worker can also help you out of that as well. So it's an, it's an improvement, but again, it's a, and it's a tried and true system. These same machines will be used for the municipal election next year. And I can tell you that there, there has to be some additional programming I was done to, say, yeah, to, to do basically PR. wrangle mm -hmm. these machines to get them to work with a PR election. Oh my God. Yeah. How they're, they're going to complain. These machines are going to well, say, no, 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 no. The thing is, it's, yeah. a, it's a huge improvement. The thing oh, is, nice. part of the specs for getting these machines yeah. was that they have to be adaptable for use in the So they elections. already figured that out. Right. Even okay. when we got the AccuVote machines back in, what is it, 1996, I they, think. They had to be modified. Um, w w there was some programming had to be done. It, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the same programming can be pretty much repurposed. Hmm. But it is a separate contract and it'll have to be done. But there's hmm. plenty of time because, you know, it, we're, we're, it's a ways off till November yeah. of an odd year. Okay. okay. Um, but again, so, but you know, it's a nice exposure to get to see them in there. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see, what else has happened? I wanted, I just want to say something briefly because I've been sort of wanting to say this the last couple of weeks and I don't want to say too much about it. But um, MIT graduate student housing was a, hmm. it was sort of a, Big issue, uh, certainly with the Volpe petition. During the election, the municipal which election. Right in yeah. the lead up to the municipal election, do you support graduate student housing? A lot of right. people say, well, that because graduate students are clogging up the arteries of all the right. available housing and they're driving up costs. Right. I think much of this is true. Right. Um, um, but the thing is, there had been a report in 2014 that we were recommending um, from MIT called the Clay Report. It was calling mm -hmm. for 500 to 600 units additional mm -hmm. housing. Those numbers have been tr moved up, definitely. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that even when uh, MIT, as the chosen developer of the Volpe site, signed their memorandum of understanding, they committed to, I believe, 950 units of housing. So, um, so that'll be in the pipeline. Um, some in Kendall Square, about f maybe a, more than all over in what they call the Northwest Quadrant, which is if you go mm. around Vassar Street, Albany yeah. Street, out around there. You know, on the sort of the, the western side of the tracks, I guess. I, I probably, or southern side of the tracks. I forget. I'm losing track. <laughs> my losing my track. bearings here. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, so the, the latest report came out pretty much oh, saying this one that down here. We're, uh, we're pretty much saying, maybe I'll just sort of show just, oops. <laughs> Let's well, that's not, the report. Right. Well, that's the report. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, you don't need to get oh. into all the details oh, of those. Right. But the thing is, is that it is the current estimate for. MIT's recommendations to yeah. the, to themselves is to go more for about oh, about a thousand fifty. Yeah, so okay. to go for uh, yeah, go right down to their August two thousand eighteen. Right, 
So now that basically what they're, they're talking about is targeting now between 1,000 and 1,100 uh, okay. as being sort of the, what they're really pushing. And then together with a commitment that every three years they'll, they'll, they'll basically revisit this and try and keep it current. Um, you know, one of the things that I think has been a really a, a tremendous uh, misunderstanding of a lot of people mm -hmm. is this notion that somehow uh, uh, MIT, if they simply built all this housing, then every graduate student either should or would want to live in there. And that's just not true. Right. You can't tell them where to live. Right. And the truth is, is that if, I, if given a choice between what some find to be not the best kept housing on some of the MIT properties, mm -hmm. some of it's great, some of it's not so great. Mm -hmm. Um, finding a roommate situation in uh, the port or mid Cambridge or someplace else or Somerville uh, is actually a better option both mm -hmm. in terms of lifestyle as well as economics. You also can pick and choose. I think in some of the situations in, in the university housing you, you don't get to pick who you live with. There are some, they, I think MIT identified some deficiencies in mm -hmm. the way you, you choose and get your choices. Mm -hmm. Um, so the thing is, they're, they're on the case. I mean, i got to give them credit mm -hmm. for that. Now, you know, it's funny because you see different estimates, and, and some of which are realistic, some are not. Um, as part of that Volpe uh, petition, there was this kind of cousin petition called the Graduate Student Housing Petition, mm. or the Smith Petition, something like that, where they were saying MIT should be obliged in order for them to build a single stick of uh, mm. building on Volpe. They have to provide 1,800 or more units of housing. I think that was overshooting it. Mm. Uh, now, maybe that would be a good thing, but I think in terms of an obligation, that was really overstepping. So mm. I think the number that they're at now is getting about 1050 or 1100, yeah. uh, you know, new units of housing. Mm -hmm. Seems to be the sort of the going good thinking coming out of MIT. Mm -hmm. um, it's less of an issue with Harvard. I think Harvard. Um, graduate student housing, it's, it's, it just, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit less of an impact. But, but graduate student housing and just student housing uh, in general, from not only MIT, but also Harvard, Boston. When I was a student at Boston University, half the graduate students I knew at BU lived in Cambridge. Well, it's close right? by. Because <laughs> it's close I, by. That's so right, it's, yeah. So focusing exclusively on a, MIT right. in terms of housing impact, right. I think, is short-sighted. Yeah. Um, you know, but, you know, but also the, 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 the economic choice is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, the cost of housing has just gone up so Crazy. much that Crazy. people yeah. who previously would not want to have lived on campus are now saying, well, if you can give me a good deal on the rent, I'd well, be happy to. Well, it's not to. that cheap. <laughs> I don't know. It's I looked true. at the it's graduate housing and it was and, and uh, actually, living with another person. It was still about $1,100 each. One of, one of so, the MIT recommendations yeah. made very, very clear that, in fact, they have to revisit the way they actually charge for housing because the revenue that was coming in was not maintaining the really? housing. Yeah. So I that mean, means they're going to have to charge more? And they probably would have to move it up a little bit. You know, you know, revise it in whatever the way. The family housing seemed to be uh, actually a good deal, but I don't know how yeah. much of that they're building. Well, another part of the recommendation. Married housing or whatever you, oh, you yeah, call it. Yeah, married yeah. housing. So the thing is, is that yeah. they, they also want to have a, a wider and more well, a more suitable range of choices. So it's just yeah. not a matter of building a bunch of, you so know, they're just not building apartments. single units for single students, right? right? So they want to variety. They want to have a variety. Is really what Good. the goal would be. And as, and as I say, I remember during some of the Kendall Square rezoning, everybody was arguing how you have to pack a lot of student graduate student housing into Kendall Square. Some of it is absolutely true, but mm. I think the the better wisdom is to spread it around so that people's choices can be met more mm. generally. So anyway, um, I so, thought it was worth mentioning because, you know, yeah. we've sort of forgotten that every Volpe passed, the, that Smith petition just went away. Well, have they but the any, issue hasn't really they, gone away. Have they done any uh, groundbreaking yet for Volpe? I don't think so. Uh, no, Volpe building is a ways off. And, yeah. and, and they remember, they have to first build the new building Well, that's for what Volpe I'm talking about, that even that hasn't so that's started really, yet, right? Oh, yeah. Honestly, oh. Um, you know, loading up the graduate student <coughs> issue on the Volpe C was really kind of a misguided perspective, I thought. So, so let's talk about, excuse me, um, <coughs> other development or building. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I just, uh, yeah, I mean, first off, things that are sort of in progress, I was 
Lots. Kitchen the bus down in Kendall Square, and uh, you know there was a, you know site preparation is really can, seems to go on forever, but once it's the site is settled and the foundations are poured, buildings can start to go up pretty fast. As we know, right on directly, our window here, directly yes. across the street from yeah, us. Yeah, we here. can't. Oh, look, it's Mass now and hiding that now has steel. New tower. They're working on the yeah. eighth story okay. of Mass and Main right now. So the mm -hmm. concrete towers went up. Uh, but now the steel's gone up. They're, the, the, the uprights are, are, are for the eighth floor now. Uh, and around, around the corner on Columbia Street, those are going up. Those are much shorter buildings, but the thing is yeah. they're all happening as we yeah. speak here. Just look out and see the cranes <clears throat> all up and down the avenue. Right. Actually, from where I'm sitting here, I can actually I, look over at Broadway and Vinnie mm -hmm. Street as well. I know. Plus, I see one tall crane way there. down on uh, Main Street. The glazing is largely in now, so it's, wow. you know, that's really kind of happening. Down in, uh, south of Maine in Kendall Square, which is MIT Development, where the old mm -hmm. MIT Press Building is. Oh, that's the that's crane all I'm looking at now. Now. Well, they're, okay. that, they're making progress there. Yeah. They're doing the foundations all underway in the building next to where the old FNT used to be. Uh, and the corner building, uh, actually going toward the Longfellow, uh, just so this was sitting there, kind of like a Hollywood prop, where they're retaining the facade, but now that the building behind it is all going yeah. up right now. It's kind so of this quick. is all the eastern part of the city? Yeah, a lot of, so far. I think a huge amount of development is actually in the eastern part of the city. Mm, One okay. big exception is, of course, Alewife oh, area. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's well, probably- Harvard Square is gonna get going too. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that yeah. as well, I think. Yeah. Certainly, you know, uh, I would argue that Envision Cambridge owes its existence to concern yeah. about development in and around right. um, Alewife Park Parkway. Yep. I think personally, I feel it was the uh, concern about the traffic, but really the 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 culprit that was identified, whether fair or unfair, was of rapid development of housing that was happening. I'd, I'd have to agree on that. Yeah, like but, I said, I go there a lot now, and it's, oh, it's just happening. Amazes and, me and, how and many, actually tonight yeah. they've got two planning mm -hmm. board. Actually, the planning board meeting last week got canceled. I showed up because oh. of, for lack of a quorum. So really? there was this new street petition that they were supposed to uh, deliberate oh, so on. they didn't d deal with they that? They didn't do it. So nobody seems to know what the inaction of the planning board due to lack of a quorum actually means in terms of how that's going to play out. Wow. My understanding is that the petitioners actually had some revisions anyway. So the reason they didn't even want to have the hearing then oh, is they want to come back with some yeah. um, uh, modified proposals. Huh. So we'll see about that. But tonight, um, there's two... two you know, Glorious hearings uh, at the planning board. For, I believe that the first one actually has to do with the. There is a zoning petition for from the city council mm -hmm. for regulation of cannabis sales right. establishments. Um, you know, <clears throat> under the mar medical marijuana, they were, I think they had two zones set up, one in the western part of the city, one in the east part of the city. This has to change now. Obviously, I think the state there was some court decision forced to change. <sighs> But the thing is, is it's coming and I think they have to do everything they're doing for medical marijuana, but they have to pretty much do with the anticipation of recreational, or as they like to say, adult use cannabis. Did as well. I see some kind of map, was it on your site, where there were at least four <coughs> in Cambridge already that are identified? Permitted, but nothing open that I know. Well, I keep seeing signs for revolutionary clinics up All in right, North so Cambridge. Is that going to be in uh, Fresh Pine Mall? Actually, revolutionary clinic, uh, that's sort of a big chain. They're, I think they have a huge production facility. That was a medical facility. first, right? Well, they were, actually, they want to open up at Norfolk and Ma Mass Ave in Central Square. Well, that's another one, but you, there's a million signs like... It's like a, it's like a marijuana centers. chain store. Well, yeah. I Well, mean, actually, I, they have a huge production facility out in Worcester. Okay, but and I think why, why do we need the more than four locations? Because we have, because well, the, the law says we have to have... You know, I think they, the way the... the you know, nobody reads those, those referendum questions, but... If they did, they'd realize that the number of allowable med uh, marijuana dis uh, places yeah, has to is be. tied to the number of liquor establishments. Right, and we, and as we I, don't really limit those too and severely. And we have 39 in this city. <coughs> so you could Lisa actually so, so so you could could have quite eight a few. or nine, we which is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. We'll I, see. I, I don't like the whole we'll thing. See. I voted no on that. Question. You know, one of my concerns is just that oh. you know we're we're sort of having to sort of support retail, but mm -hmm. there are certain uses. Like I've always bothered, it bothers me that like a yeah. traditional retail got driven out of Central Square because you yeah. can make a lot more money mm -hmm. by serving alcohol in a restaurant, um, yeah. have a club or something like that. Yeah. 
uh, and consequently, if you wanted just a place to buy pants or socks, forget about it. It's, yeah. it's just not right. economically competitive, right? Right. Um, so the thing is, is, whenever you have these uses sort of come piling in here, it actually could mean that other things that we also want may never arrive. So I have some concerns. Um, but the thing is, so that's tonight, it's not, it's a, a planning board, it's cannabis rezoning, but also yeah. yet another 299 yeah. unit housing Is this development. on another part of your site? Because I read about it. I thought it's it was in the on calendar. Your... Oh, yeah. it's in the calendar. Yeah, Thank under you. the planning okay, board report. There we so, go. so anyway, right. so that's actually having a hearing tonight The as Hanover well. Company. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is one thing just as a reminder is that back McKinnon around 2005, company. I think, Richard yeah. McKinnon, yeah, the... Uh, um, there was a Concord Alwife plan anticipated and encouraged development of housing in former industrial areas, warehouse areas, mm -hmm. like Alwife, much of the Alwife area mm. could, could be described that way. What, what people didn't quite anticipate was just how rapidly right. some and of that And just housing. Happened. No no stores, so no there was, retail, no... That's where the money yeah. was. To build yeah. housing, you could actually you could make profit. So people were building housing. Yeah. And Cambridge Park Drive, that's really... Cambridge Park Drive, which yeah. and to me the big problem with that is it's like one gigantic cul-de-sac. And there's only one way in, one way out. One way out. And yeah. they never built the dam bridge. Yeah. So, so to there me, there's a little bit of failure in yep. planning there. Definitely. I don't mind the fact that there's housing, but the thing is, I want to be able to see roads passing through. I want it to be well planned. So, um, is that really why the Fresh Pond Alliance got started? By I would say I that, mean, well, other than to further a political career, ago. but uh, the thing no, is, no, but this was four years ago. I think I think it was largely yeah. concern about gr uh, growth yeah, in Alwife because it had gone and, and so quickly that people yeah it was the they, they were alarmed by it yeah right. But do you remember you know if you if you roll the clock back 15, 20 years, everybody mm -hmm. was concerned about commercial development. The Cambridge Citizens for Livable Neighborhoods and the Cambridge mm. Residents for Growth Management were all spawned yeah. out of concern about excessive commercial development. Rent control ended, the, the focus changed, city policies changed, yeah. and next thing you know, they were pretty much trying to encourage housing in, they changed the law to allow housing mm -hmm. in all zones, including in former industrial zones. So yeah. places like um, North Point and uh, some parts of East Cambridge and certainly Oh, North Point. suddenly That's, became yeah. ripe for housing development. What's going on with North Point? Right. That you don't hear much of it. Isn't there housing? I know there's some housing. Is there more going on down there? Uh, yeah. Or is that, uh, but more they, housing and and more. But who owns that land? That's not the <coughs> private development. Isn't that the uh, private developer? MBT. No. No, no. Trade? Well, that that's a separate matter. Oh, okay. But the thing is, is right. that it's uh, is it, what's the name of the company? I'm spacing out on the Beal? name of the company. Beal. Boston no, no, no. Property. No. But the thing is, it's it's a big development going on down there, and right. um, and there's a lot more to come. Some mm -hmm. of which is in Somerville. You know, it's it straddles oh, the Somerville true. Cambridge right, border, right, so not right. all of it's in that's Cambridge. That's true, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, this was basically just old rail yards, uh, right. Which are now being kind of repurposed. Uh, I actually had to be down there last week because I've been cleaning up thirty some odd years of stuff in my house, and what found, jumping? I, I found like oh. yeah, you know, I don't know, lots of like wax. Candle wax that a former tenant candle had done wax. for used for a, an experiment on photovoltaics, and it's been sitting in my basement for decades. And what did you do with it? I put a little notice on next door Cambridge, say anybody want candle wax, and I got a couple people said yes, oh so, I delivered, so I, wow. I, 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 I delivered it. Oh my gosh! So I delivered it. And you actually deliver it? They don't. Pick I wanted to get wax. it out of the house, and I said this Must is the quickest a way wax. to do it. Yeah. And it was a lot of wax. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Didn't melt, huh? And no, it didn't melt. Um, but uh, but anyway, so that's funny. Less stuff in my basement. So you that's were down in that area. So I was down North Point and then over in the port, making a couple of wax deliveries. Jeez, and, you're nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's so cool. Let's look uh, at some of this <coughs> stuff over here. Yeah. yeah. So all right. So yeah. so so Richie McKenna is doing the housing development there. Cambridge Park Drive. Yeah, right. and I'll, as I was alluding to, this is I my view. Envision Cambridge was spawned basically. Development in Alewife was happening. People said there's no master plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a master plan. Right. No, there's a master plan. Right. So, okay, so an election happened. I think it was 2000, was it 13? Can't remember. 15? One of those. Well, and Jan came in in 15. <clears throat> right, no. so it must have been 13 because I think it predates. Right. Thir yeah. And then that's that started the whole push toward uh, master plan process, which was Envision Cambridge. So that's how it came. Now, that's actually coming to a head. And yeah. uh, next month in September and October, there'll be these various scenario meetings scattered all around town. 
think there's a round table on it. There's a round table, whatever, because Envision Cambridge is not going to go on forever. By the end yeah. of the year, it's done. Yeah. And then what will come back with proposals, and some of those proposals may call for more housing or less housing, or mm -hmm. where you're going to put yeah. the housing, mm -hmm. or where you want to put light industrial. I think there's a big favor. It's going to deal with traffic, too. Right. Well, I mean, in my opinion, Envision Cambridge hasn't addressed Mobility. Uh, mobility nearly to the degree that mm. they should have or could yeah. have. They yeah. didn't take a regional perspective that I'm aware of. That's a good point because um, it really does depend <clears throat> on other. Yeah. And part of it is the flaw of some of the way these working groups work because it's basically driven by the agendas of people who show up. Right. And, you know, if everybody shows up and just wants to talk about bicycles, then you're going to talk about bicycles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they, should there be maybe a need for another bridge over a railroad track, either in Alwai or elsewhere? Mm -hmm. Right? You know, if you think about it, there's not a lot of ability to get across various railroad tracks in this area. Yeah. Uh, they're like moats. We're surrounded by moats. So, yeah, um, that's so important. So, I don't think there's yeah. any recommendations to speak of coming out addressing well, some of those they, transportation they put issues. pressure on some developers, maybe not through Envision, but the other. Well, that might actually be the yeah. way to make um, to get that things bridge, like, yeah. like out in Alewife happen. Right. All right. Yeah. So, that, so, anyway, so, that's happening. Yeah. And, uh, um, but again, it's kind of an outgrowth of, well, there's a lot of factors that right. led to it. So no, you, Now, down in Kendall Square, just to mention two in particular, Kendall Square, in addition to all the other stuff that's happened south of Main Street, Broadway and Vinnie, mm -hmm. uh, if you go further over toward North Point, all of that stuff. But, um, but in addition now, in the, under the bailiwick of the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority and Boston Properties, right where the Marriott Hotel is, yep. right at the, at the head house for the T Station on mm -hmm. the outbound side, uh, they want to put a rather large building there. Oh, right? another um, one. This I mean, is all we'll new just to sort me. of touch on it. So the thing is, you see there highlighted in purple, right, sort of right in front of where the Marriott is. They want to locate this building, which will actually be a, at least as tall as the Marriott. Wow. Right there, edged right up against Main Street, directly across from where the MIT I Press building is. I mean, the Volpe is going to be happening behind there somewhere, and then you got the and foundry on the south building, side, and then yeah. So this is a picture of the north side, and now on the south wow. side. Is where MIT is already building build, bigger buildings. Plus, you, so, uh, there's right? just going to be so, so much going on down there. So on the left, you're basically there. seeing the, the building that would essentially now. that would get replaced by this much taller building. Wow. Now, if we actually we we scroll down here yep. a little bit, actually, let's sort of do it, do it talk and, and chew come at the same time. Yep. Here, right? Yep. Um, one development that I think is welcomed by a lot of people, but of course, there's always going to be questions, is is right in the heart of Harvard Square. Why don't you show that? Yeah. So. More to come later if everything happens over yeah. around Brattle Square. But for the time yeah. being on Church Street, yeah. where Gerald, Gerald Chan. Chan has a property. So there's this um, property here, which is where the, the cinema was. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's kind of happening. So here. this would be the building here. Yeah. So basically, it's already kind of a blank wall right yeah. now where the cinema is. Actually, if you scroll down a little bit here, you'll see some other images of it. So oh, right across street from the church. So oh. if you if you look from more right at the church directly across, it has this sort of inner courtyard exposed. Yeah. Some people are already complaining because there may be the lights or whatever are going to be oh, too yeah. bright or whatever. But you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that perspective. I think this is a big positive change for Square, and even some of the people you <sighs> might think would be opposed are actually pretty okay with it. Mm. Actually, let's scroll down just to show a few little ones. Uh, Quick ones. Oh, this okay. is actually what the inner courtyard would look like. So there's going to be cinemas at the bottom level, basement level, offices on the first so it's floor. No housing, right? Uh, no housing on this right. one. Not that I'm aware of, right? Uh, right. I think there's a couple more maybe, and, and, and we'll kind of wind it down. So this is from the Mass Ave, just side instead of looking this is toward. This an old photo. Yeah, yes. it's very much an old photo, but some of you may remember that the entry to the cinema yes, I used to that. be right, on the, right there. Right next to the coop. Exactly, mm -hmm. right? And then it kind of wraps around over to Church Street. There's oh. also a, uh, I don't think I have any images of it here, but there's what? also a, um, uh, a Church Street side. Actually, this would will, will show it here. Yeah. So there's the big fancy frontage with the inner wow. courtyard. that's a huge building. <clears throat> yeah, but the thing is, is it's not particularly yeah. bigger than what's there now. Okay, just that it right? looks It is bigger. a little bit bigger, yeah. maybe an extra story. I think it's five okay. five stories. So where is right? Palmer Street? Right, that's Palmer. That's You're right Palmer. there. Over okay. the, and so there's an alley that goes into yeah. there now, so they would activate that and make it a lot more uh, well, that friendly. That was the whole thing about the lighting and people got <clears throat> crazy about that. Well, also yeah. with the marquee for the theater, which is on Church yeah. Street, I think. 
And Cloud so, Pass team, which I always yeah, point out is somewhere right. around. <laughs> but anyway, so that's a development. And I don't know what the timing on that is, but I know that they're having meetings. And that particular presentation, those are images I, I lifted from a presentation that will yeah. be before the Cambridge Historical Commission on September, on September 6th. Okay. So just to be aware of that if you have some things to say. I mean, you know, they don't decide on building permits at the Historical Commission as, as such, but who? historical appropriateness within the Harvard Square. So who controls uh, the timing of these? Because I know, what about the uh, the Curious George, er, the Abbott thing? Is that yeah. going to go on at the same time? Um, I don't see how that could I possibly... I think that'll probably happen sooner, and then okay, this will happen later. I was going to say, you yeah. can't do both. It'd I think crazy. Actually, the, the biggest, just paralyze Harvard Square? Yeah, the biggest concern people have had yeah. about this Church Street development is that um, it, it, it was a lot of nice pictures, but nobody mm. knew when it would ever happen, or if it would ever happen. Yeah. So now it seems pretty clear that it's yeah. happening. But the thing right, is, is it's that... it's going to take a while. So you get your mm. approvals with the Historical Commission, you get everything mm. in place, and then maybe it can happen. It's, it's, got, it's great <sighs> if you have somebody like Gerald Chan behind it, because he's yeah. independently wealthy. He's not sort of... Right. They, he doesn't necessarily have to cater to various right. financial parties. He also he can just lives move locally in the sense that he's yeah, yeah. not coming in. in no, I, I think yeah, he's I got think a commitment. It's to a the very area. promising development. Yeah. I think it could work yeah. out pretty well, you know. But you know, we'll still have to see. There will be zoning petitions to follow for Harvard Square in general, like the Crone petition will probably oh, come back. There's just so much version. going on. I don't know. Yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. The, the, probably the biggest impact site in Harvard Square, I think, will be over around where. Um, the Guglielmo Plaza and Brattle Square is. You mean the uh, where Felipe's building? is, it's only one oh, story. Right there. And yeah. that's oh. really underbuilt. So there's no way yeah, that's going to that, stay that way. Okay. Anyway, I think we're pretty yeah, much out of time. And we won't, we won't be here next not, week. Not next week. But we'll Go be vote. back in two weeks. Okay. So. See you then. See you then.